I'm Bifsky, and I play and stream Ultima Online on Outlands. Outlands is one of the highest populated global UO servers and is free to play. There's a link to the Outlands website in this video's description, as well as a link to my stream. Feel free to contact me on Outlands Discord for any questions. You taunt the dwellers with your shiny gold armor, gathering and leading them to promised riches. But the hope is lost when there is a click. It's the last thing they'll ever hear. You are the Pied Piper. You are the Trapper. Today's guide is credited to Bapeth, Script, Dubs, and a Lockpick. The Trapper has many variations, which I'll briefly touch on, but the main focus for this video will be on the Tamer version. Use pets to round up tank and DPS creatures while having the choice of 8 different support and damage traps at your disposal. Then finish off any remaining creatures with spells from Madury. Today I'm excited to share with you the Tamer Trapper, which is without a doubt my current favourite farming build. The Pros Burst Damage most definitely has the highest burst damage capability, allowing you to strong arm and control dungeon spawn and corpse looting rights against other players. Beware, this really pisses people off, and you'll have even blues attacking you if you get too greedy. Versatility A trapper can do nearly all forms of PVM content well, that is, dungeon farming, shrines, and treasure maps. Most importantly, Bringing the trapper to a boss can benefit an entire party immensely, with a range of support traps to weaken a boss in several different ways. A trapper can also take care of boss add spawns quickly and efficiently single-handedly. Aspect Leveling The Tamer Trapper is now my go-to method for leveling fresh aspects, for other echoes. Recently I broke a personal record by using this template to level blood aspect from tier 0 to 10 in 3 days. You can check my Twitch VODs for evidence of this. Extremely fun and satisfying to play. Explosions can be highly addictive and you may find yourself dungeon farming more than ever before. The Cons Cost This is by no means a new player friendly build, as tinkering and taming are two of the most expensive and time consuming skills. When I personally leveled tinkering from 50 to 120, I consumed roughly 160,000 iron ingots. At the time of leveling, iron ingots cost me 7 GP each, a total whopping 1.1 million gold give or take. Hourly Expenses Traps cost 10 ingots and 1 alchemy pot. Let's say you detonate 25 traps every 15 minutes. This equates to roughly 10,000 gold every hour. It's very little compared to how much you'll earn, but it's an expense nonetheless. Trap cooldowns. Traps take 3 minutes to refresh, and you have a total maximum of 7 at 120-120. This means, if you throw down traps willy-nilly, you'll find yourself standing around waiting. Boating. Traps cannot be used on boats or ships. PvP. This is probably one of the most vulnerable templates to player attacks, having no wrestling, no spell resist, and no tracking to help you. Any level of animal taming in animal law is acceptable, as long as the pets are tanky enough to withstand and tank damage before traps are detonated. Madury is your means of healing pets while they are moving into position. After detonating traps, excess mana can be used to cast offensive spells to clean up. This is also your way of conserving traps. Meditation is self-explanatory. You will be healing your pets a lot, so mana regen is going to be important. Tinkering is needed to craft and use traps. Detecting hidden is used in conjunction with tinkering. It determines how many traps you can place every 3 minutes, of up to 7 at 120-120, and increases inflicted trap damage, trap effects, and radius. The skill is also useful for detecting hidden players who are up to no good. The last 40 points are up to you. Some people use alchemy to enhance pots, inscription to increase timers on spells such as bless, or camping to increase carry loads. If you can't be bothered or can't afford taming, there are easier alternatives. The Warrior Trapper is credited to the Great Bapeth. 
With this template, rather than having your pets round up in tank mobs, it's all you. You use parry and spell resist for damage mitigation, whilst using bandages and pots to heal, with weapon skills as secondary damage. Place traps down, and boom. The neat lockpicker trapper is credited to Script and Mr. Lockpick, who use the trapper skills to nuke unsuspecting enemies whilst never breaking stuff. This template is nice for doing solo team maps and dungeon chest lockpicking. This is a much more relaxing version of the trapper. Pretty straightforward here for the tamer trapper. 100 strength, 25 dexterity, and 100 intelligence. I won't talk too much about pets here as there are so many viable compositions at different levels. Typically you want something suitable for the dungeon in selection, with pets that can withstand the roundup phase. My go-to pet combo for most cases is the Sand Roach Prowler at the time of this video, but the 5 Black Cat combo is my choice for Mausoleum, so it really depends. For Aspect, Fortune Armor is a sure thing, lending the template with increased trap damage for every tier. We can't forget to mention the increased gold and loot item chance bonus as well. Fortune Armor also favours those who are using the lockpicking variation of the build. Fortune Aspect for the Spellbook is acceptable to use, however keep in mind that it won't proc when healing pets, but only when casting those offensive spells on enemies. Therefore, my go-to choice for the Spellbook Aspect is Command. You'll proc during times of offensive casting as well as pet healing, allowing you to maximise your proc rate. The downside is that you'll burn through a lot more essence. Personally, I mostly farm with Double Fortune and save Command Spellbook applications for boss fights. Ideal links for Chain Mastery are any of the following. Trap and Wand Damage, Follower Damage, and Spell Aspect Effect Chance. Leather Armor is ideal here. Anything heavier will bring in too much Meditation Penalty. To this day, I still use Basic Bro Exceptional Crafted Armor. For the spellbook, I take exceedingly potent for decent mana refunds on spells. This will let you pump out more heals and more damaging spells in the long run. Preparation is key. Before I set out in the field, I take the following items. 80 to 100 of each reg. 5 to 15 of each relevant pot. 6 trapped pouches for PK para stuns. 25 platinum wire. 25 greater explosion pots. A detonator. Delectable food for the food satisfaction buff, and a skinning knife for easy looting. Note: Floor traps do not apply damage or effects to players or tamed creatures. To create, place, and detonate a trap, you need three things. Trap wire, a potion, and a detonator. The type of trap wire that inflicts the most damage and effects is platinum wire and uses 10 iron ingots to craft with tinkering. There are 8 types of potions in Outlands and each one creates a different type of floor trap which is displayed on screen now. To use traps, simply double click your platinum wire and target yourself. This will open the trap gump. Make sure your trigger is set to detonator rather than proximity. You don't want your trap setting off too early by mistake. Next select the type of trap you wish to place and click place trap. To detonate traps, double click your detonator. You can either target the individual traps on the ground to set them off or target self to detonate all traps. Please note, no real llamas were hurt in this video, only ones from the test server. All pet commands should be on keybind. To round up enemy creatures, simply run close and press all guard me. The moment you see the mob move towards your pets, hit or follow me. Keep repeating this as you move around and gather up creatures. Now it's time to lay traps. I used three keybinds for traps. 
a key to lay a trap, a key to detonate all traps, and a key to open the trap selection gump. Bind all alchemy pots to keys. Bind a macro that uses the skinning knife and targets self for easy corpse looting. It gives me great joy and satisfaction to play the Trapper Tamer, and even more so to share it with you today. Despite its initial setup costs and hourly expense, it has me bringing in more gold than ever before. There's just something so satisfying about gathering mobs and lighting them up with big explosions. But don't get too excited as you'll have to exercise some restraint. Conserving traps and finding a good medium is the art of trapping without having to stop and linger. Remember preparation is key and look out for PKs as they will easily snuff out your flame. Big special thanks to Bepeth, Script, Lockpick, and Dubs for answering my gazillion questions when I first started out playing this build. Your willingness to share information helps out the Outlands community. And of course, a big juicy shout out to Trammy Surprise for putting this video together. Please visit his Twitch at twitch.tv slash Surprise and subscribe here for free to never miss out on new videos. Lastly, huge thanks to you guys for your support. It is you who motivate us to make content. Your love is our energy. See you on the next guide, which will be the Summoner Trapper. Please subscribe to Biffski at twitch.tv slash Biffski. See ya.